transformations practice test with you because your test is going to look almost exactly like this. So this is the key to it for you to study from. So be sure you're understanding all of these parts because this is what your test is going to look like. All right. For the first three, these are vocab words. So it says use the words translation, reflection, or rotation to fill in the blanks below. All right, let's look. Flipping an object across a line. So flipping an object. I remember telling you guys in your original lesson, flipping FL comes into play when you're looking at the word FL reflection. So flipping an object is the same thing as reflecting it. So we're going to use the word reflection here. Okay, the second one, sliding a figure in any direction without changing its size, shape, or orientation. When you slide it, remember SL is also in translation, sorry, you can't see that, translation. So to slide a figure is to translate it translation okay and then lastly turning an object so to turn means to rotate so turn means to rotate so this is a rotation all right the next part is actually doing the translation so it says first we're going to look at the shape and translate it according to the directions. So one to the right and six up. So we're gonna take each point and go one to the right, six up, one to the right, six up, one to the right, six up. So let's start with T. One to the right and then one, two, three, four, five, six up will land right here, T prime. And yes, you are gonna to have to label them with prime notation on your test. So let's practice doing it right right now. Take G, one to the right, six up, it will land right here and now it will become G prime. Don't forget your little dash. And then B, one to the right, and then one, two, three, four, five, six up would be B prime. Okay, and you can either do full lines here or you can do the dashed lines. Um, doesn't really matter to me. Okay, number two. First of all, it says to move this one five units to the left, but there's nothing there. So you are going to have to actually plot these points first, and then we'll move it five to the left. So here we go. Let's put R at four, negative three. So always start at the origin. Four, negative three is to the right four and down three. And we are calling that R, not R prime. This is our original one. This is a pre-image. D is at four zero, so that's to the right four and up or down zero. So just right there on the x-axis. That is called D, not D prime. And then L is at zero zero, so this is L. So let's go ahead and connect it and see where our triangle is. And now that we've got it, it says now we're going to translate it five units to the left. So take each of these points, so let's start with L. One, two, three, four, five. This one now is L prime because it is the image. Pre-image does not have prime notation. Image does. All right, five to the left for D. One, two, three, four, five. D prime. And then R, five to the left. One, two, three, four, five. R prime. And then fill that in or connect your dots, sorry. And now you have both of them. So all of these should have two pictures, two shapes on it that are identical that have just been slid over, translated. Okay, on number three, we're no longer translating. We are reflecting. So be sure you're using the line of reflection given. In this one, it is the y-axis. So if you're not sure which one's the x or y-axis, they're actually labeled for you. Here's the x-axis. And then here's a Y up here, the Y axis. So I'm going to darken in the Y axis just to make sure that I'm flipping it the right direction. So it's like there's a mirror that's been placed right here and you're seeing where the reflection is of this shape. So it's going to flip over the Y axis. So you look at where G is. From our reflection line, G is three to the right. So you're going to move it one, two, three to the left of the reflection line on that same 
horizontal line and it is going to become G prime because it's our image after the pre-image is already there. L is only one away from this line so it's going to go the other direction one away and it's going to now be L prime. And then Q is one, two, three, four away so it's going to go one, two, three, four away the other direction and become Q prime. All right, draw in your triangle. Don't just leave the labels there. And now it is reflected. Number four, this time we are gonna have to plot it again because it's not there, and then we'll reflect it over the x-axis. So let's go ahead and put A at two, two. That means to the right two and up two, call it A. Two, five is to the right two and up one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna call that B. And then C is 5, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. That is C. Connect your triangle. All right, this time we are reflecting it over the x-axis. So this is our x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and darken it in just because it's a good thing to practice doing to make sure that you're flipping it the right direction. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, since we're flipping it over the x-axis, we're now going up and down instead of left or right. So C is one above the x-axis, so we're gonna move C prime to one below the x-axis. A is two above the x-axis, so we're gonna move it to two below and call it A prime. And then B is five above, so we're gonna go to the x-axis and move it five below. Don't forget to label it with prime notation, the little dashes. That will be counted wrong on your test if you don't do that. All right, it should look like it has just gone and flipped upside down over the x-axis. Okay, turn it over to the back. Um, we have a word bank, translation, reflection, rotation, and we are gonna identify which type is in each of these three pictures. So it looks to me like N, flipped upside down to become n prime. So they just flipped it over the x-axis. So this would be a rotation. All right, number six, um, the triangle was pointed down. And then when you look at this one, it's pointed to the side. So this one actually rotated. It rotated around, either this way or this way. We're not even sure which way it rotated um, because there's not a little prime notation. But it doesn't matter because it's not asking about that. It's just asking what it is, and it is a rotation. All right, and then number seven. So it went from A, B, C, D here, and it slid this direction. And I know that because it has prime notation showing this is where it moved to. So it slid to the left, which is a translation. And just because it worked out nice and neat for us to use one of each of these three on each of these three problems, do not think that your test couldn't have two rotations or two, um, oh, did I put rotation? I put rotation here. Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna call me out on this and I'm glad I went over it because this is definitely a reflection. Whoops wasn't thinking about what I wrote. I'm so sorry. I'm glad I went over that. Reflection, rotation, translation. Hope I haven't made any other mistakes up to this point. Okay, um, then we're going to actually talk about real life. The blades of a fan when it's moving. So if you think of a fan, this is a terrible fan. But it's more like a pinwheel, actually. So if the blades of a fan were moving, and you're actually going to see it moving, it is actually spinning. And something that spins is rotating. So this is an example of a rotation. Okay, looking at yourself in the mirror, looking at yourself in the mirror. So again, terrible artist, but that's okay. Here you are. If you're looking at yourself in this mirror, what you're going to see on this mirror is your reflection. So something here and flip to over here is going to be a reflection. 
All right, playing a game of checkers and moving your piece. Even if you haven't played checkers before, um, I'm sure you're all pretty familiar with a checkerboard. And if you have a piece right here and you are moving it to a different spot, you are sliding it. So you are translating it. So that would be an example of a translation. And then um, the tire of a car as it's moving. So once again, you've got a center point and a tire as it moves. This looks more like a bicycle tire, but that's okay. It's moving around in a circle. So this would be rotating around a center point. So this would once again be a rotation. All right, um, identify the direction, the degrees and the direction. You are answering two things here. Please remember that for your test. I'm gonna be looking for two things. The degrees is always going to be either 90, 180, or 270 for eighth grade. When you get into high school, you're gonna do more degrees of rotation. But for our purposes, the degrees will only be 90, 80, or 270 and the direction is going to be clockwise or counterclockwise. And you can use a C for clockwise and you can use two C's for counterclockwise. And that is totally fine with me. Or you can write it all out if you want. All right, let's look at our first example. S is here, I'm looking at only one point, and it goes to here, S prime. So it could have just slid one, two, three, four, but let's see if the other ones slide. L does not just slide four, so it's not a translation. It looks to me like the whole shape started here in this upper right quadrant and rotated over to the upper left quadrant. So this is going to be a rotation of only 90 degrees because it went from the top right to the top left. If it did a 180, it'd be top right to bottom left because it would be exactly opposite, but it only moved one quadrant over, one quarter turn. So a quarter turn is 90 degrees. 90 degrees, this direction is not the way a clock moves. So it's counterclockwise. So 90 degrees counterclockwise is the right answer. Now I want you guys to know that if I would have started here and gone clockwise, this would have been 90, this would have been 180, and this would have been 270 right where it landed. So technically, 90 degrees backwards counterclockwise is the same answer as 270 degrees clockwise. So for this on our test, I will actually also take 90 degrees counterclockwise or 270 clockwise. These are both correct, so I will take either one. You do not need to put both. All right, last one. Um, definitely a rotation again because it's not sliding anywhere. I'm going to look at K. So K started here and it looks like it swings down. It rotates down to this bottom corner here. So once again, it's not going to be a 180 or it would have been all the way over opposite of it, but it's just 90. Now let's talk again, 90 degrees. If it's going this direction, that is clockwise. That's the same way the clock turns. So 90 degrees clockwise is correct. But just like I said earlier, 90 degrees clockwise is the same thing as where it would land if you went 90, 180, 270 counterclockwise. So on this particular problem, I would also take the answer of 270 degrees counterclockwise. You don't need to put both. If you put one or the other, you'll be correct on this problem.